More often, we're going to see situations where we have inequality constraints. That is, instead of equality, we're going to have something that's a little looser. And we want to know exactly what's going to happen in that situation. So in general, you'll have a situation, uh, well, in specific, we're going to first look at maximization of a two-variable fu function subject to g of x, y is less than or equal to some b. And so what, what's the picture? So we had a picture before. Um, so let's, let's get our region. So this is the region where g of x, y is less than or equal to b. And there are basically two kind of situations that can occur. The first situation is you have a maximum on the boundary of that set. That is, you have a maximum where g of x star y star is actually equal to b. And so that constraint is what's called binding. So that would be a situation where the maximum has this constraint binding. And the other kind of thing that can happen is, well, your maximum actually occurs inside of this set. So here you'll have that g of x star y star is strictly less than b. And in this case, we'll, we'll call this not binding. And there are a few other names, and you can read about those. This is great. So we know exactly uh, these two cases, and we want to examine what happens in both cases. Well, in let's consider the first case. In the first case, let's consider level sets of my function f. So here's a level set of my function f, a level set of my function f, so on and so forth. Well, if I look at this, I notice that, well, if, the, so the first thing I really want to look at is the gradient of g. And I'm going to note that the gradient of g points out of the set, right? That gradient g is going to point out. And why is that? So the gradient at the boundary points outside well that's because inside of here everything's less than or equal to b so if I move inside of the set I'm decreasing I've got to be decreasing and so of course my gradient has to point outside of the set and that's that's really good for us that'll be helpful so when we look at the level sets of our function f and, uh, and say we have a level set like this, we notice that, well then, our gradient of f has to point in the same direction, just as in the situation where we had the equality constraint. And we notice that, of course, we still have that the gradient of f is equal to the gradient of g at the maximum or is equal to uh, some constant, we'll call it lambda, at the maximum. So these are still in the same direction. But we also have lambda is greater than or equal to zero in this situation. Greater than or equal to zero. And that's actually really important. We have to make sure that that is going to actually occur. So this is the situation here. We have uh, that the gradient of f is going to be a multiple of the gradient of g, and it has to be a positive constant that's scaling everything. So that's great. 
in, an, in the other situation where we have g is less than b, well, it's the, it's the normal old situation. So here, here are level sets of f now, circling around this guy. So this was case one. In case two, we have that g of x star y star is strictly less than b, and we call this the non-binding constraint. Well, here we have to have that the gradient of f has to vanish. And that's really the only first order condition that we have to have. And we can still fit this into the Lagrangian formulation. If we stipulate that that lambda that we would normally have, lambda star is equal to zero in this situation. So when we have this inequality constraint, we're going to have that lambda is greater than or equal to zero. And it's going to be zero if we actually occur or a maximum is going to occur inside of the inequality set. And so we immediately notice something. Uh, then we see that Under these circumstances, either lambda star is equal to zero, or g of x star y star is equal minus b is equal to zero. So one or the other holds. And this condition. complementary slackness. And the, uh, so slackness here is like a rope, you know, if uh, it can either be taut or slack, right? And so in particular, if one of the inequalities is slack, then the other has to be taut. That's really what's going on there. Uh, and now we have a nice theorem that we can state that basically says exactly how my Lagrangian is going to encode the maximums for systems where I have two variables, functions of two variables, and one inequality constraint. So suppose f and g are C1 functions. on R2. And X star Y star is a local maximum of F subject to G of x, y is less than or equal to b. Well, if g of x star, y star is equal to b, further suppose, so if the inequality is actually binding, then we further have to suppose that the gradient of g, x star, y star, does not vanish. Right, and this is just the non-degenerate 
constraint qualification. Only now it's a little weakened because we have the inequality there instead. So in any case, form the Lagrangian. which will be L of x, y, lambda is equal to F of x, y minus lambda times G of x, y minus B, square bracket. Then we have the following first order conditions. So we have a multiplier lambda star such that the first thing is at the maximum and given the multiplier, both of the partials of the first two variables are equal to zero. The second thing is that we're going to have the complementary slackness condition. That is, either lambda star has to be equal to zero or the constraint has to be satisfied. It has to be binding. See, we have to have that lambda star is always greater than or, or equal to zero. And D, the final thing, of course, is that this inequality constraint has to hold. And that is that. Next, we'll do an example.